2021 Lincoln Corsair Grand Touring Review, The Cost of Electricity But before we start, please support us by pressing the like and subscribe buttons, so that we can continue to provide information about car and motorcycle news. Also turn on the bell button to get the latest updates. Your support means a lot to us. Thank you. Cruising down the road on a blissful and silent wave of electric power, the 2021 Lincoln Corsair Grand Touring makes sense. The attractive body and pleasant cabin are indistinguishable from the gas model, but a 14.4 kWh battery promises 28 miles of all-electric range and qualifies the Corsair for a welcome federal income tax credit. It certainly seems like a compelling alternative to the gas-only model, despite a well-publicized delay. And then, like the din of a lawnmower breaking the quiet of a lazy afternoon, the 2.5-liter gas engine fires up and our enjoyment fades. Like Lincoln's other Grand Touring badged plug-in hybrid, the Aviator Grand Touring, this Corsair is a good idea that sacrifices refinement for electrification. Disregard the droning engine and there's plenty to like here, but that's a big ask in what's supposed to be a luxury vehicle. Automakers shouting from the rooftops that their car is electrified is all well and good, but we admire those that choose the plug without making radical design changes. Aside from a charge port ahead of the driver's door and a blue tint to the Corsair wordmark on the front fenders, the Grand Touring is indistinguishable from the gas-only model. And that's fine, the Corsair is a handsome vehicle, distinct from its blue oval-badged sibling, the Ford Escape. Adopting an aviator-inspired snout with a fresh take on the traditional waterfall grille, which now features a mesh look, the Corsair's best angle isn't from the front or sides, but from the rear quarter. A rising belt line, descending roof line, and attractive haunches give the rear a squat, sporty look while a vehicle-wide light bar connects it all and serves as the foundation for the prominent Lincoln badging on the tailgate. This is a fine-looking compact cuff. Lincoln left the cabin alone, retaining the same attractive materials as the standard car. Our tester's cashew leather contrasts nicely with a strip of faux metal in the inset dash, the sensation of depth there is less dramatic than in a navigator or aviator, but it's still a welcome design touch. Less welcome are the mess of buttons and knobs on the center console and the smallish 8.0-inch display propped atop the center stack like a billboard. And there are some build quality concerns too. Those buttons have dull action and the overuse of piano black plastic trim is disappointing. More damning are the jiggly knobs, an element rotates around a fixed center, but every surround feels loose. The Corsair's cabin is competitive relative to the Infiniti QX50 or aging Mercedes-Benz GLC, which have some chintzy aspects too, but it falls short of the segment leaders like the BMW X3 and Audi Q5. On electric power, the Corsair GT is unquestionably the most refined member of Lincoln's compact line. Its control of wind and tire noise is excellent, and aside from the pedestrian warning thrum at low speeds, you'll zip along in pleasant isolation. Run the battery down, though, and the port injected, Atkinson Cycle 2.5-liter engine fires into life with an incessant low-amplitude drone that's grating, especially if you enjoy podcasts or talk radio. A gas-only Corsair's NVH is dramatically better. That's a sizable shortcoming, but the Corsair does make up on the comfort front in other ways. The front seats could use more padding but wow with the availability of 24-way adjustability, heating slash ventilation, and an impressive massage function. Notably for fans of having their backsides caressed by a bunch of motors, the massager will run until you tell it to stop. Moving to the plug-in model doesn't sacrifice cargo volume, with the Corsair retaining the gas model's 26.9 cubic foot trunk. There are a few cubbies and decent door pockets in the cabin, so the Corsair GT is as capable of managing your stuff. The second row bench seat will accommodate a pair of adults, with plenty of head and legroom, 38.4 and 36.7 inches for the number lovers. Those figures are down on the Audi Q5 FEV, 39.3 and 38.0 inches, but only the tallest folks will struggle in the Corsair's second row. The Corsair GT sacrifices none of the standard car's ride quality, either. It comes with 19-inch wheels and adaptive dampers as standard, although our tester wore handsome 20-inch alloys. Even with the larger wheels, the Corsair is compliant and poised over bumps, with excellent body control even after larger impacts. Take this Lincoln up to 80 miles per hour and it feels impressively stable, too.
Thanks for watching. Drop a like. Leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe to watch more videos like this.